hands, it makes the heart grow yonder. Hi everyone, I'm David TKI of Daventry. And uh, on the couch with me, I have Dark Armist. He is in a lot of gaming communities, but he runs the Quest for Glory series with me, a game that uh, is near and dear to my heart. But today, we're doing King's Quest V. So let's go ahead and get this started. Time begins on first click. So three, two, one, go. All right, you get Cedric's first line for free here. Yeah, I'm giving that one to y'all because uh, Cedric's uh, line's not great. But we're, we're just going to go ahead and move on from that. So let's talk a little bit about optimizing King's Quest V movement a little bit. Uh, obviously, you want to spend as little time as possible actually selecting your icons and then uh, clicking them on the thing on the screen. So uh, the insert button on the keyboard will always change you instantly from whatever you have selected to walk. Or if you happen to have walk selected, it will switch back to the last thing you had selected, which is very useful. We call that insert storage. Uh, tab will open up the inventory really quickly, so we can do stuff like select the uh, fish, throw it out. Uh, be sure to memorize where the items are in the inventory. You want to spend as little time actually looking for it as possible. Uh, so one of the unusual things about King's Quest V, the puzzle design is interesting. There's a desert here to the left, and uh, well, as you might expect from a desert, there's a thirst mechanic. Graham is going to die of thirst after like eight screens without water. And you might, it's a little unusual to be going here so early. There's no map of the desert, not in the manual, not in the game, and the only way to figure out where you are going in the desert is to manually map it out yourself with a lot of trial and error. Uh, but there is some water right here. Sierra ah, loves their mazes. Life-giving water. Nectar of the gods. Nectar of the gods. It's that life-giving water. Uh-huh. Yeah. So first thing we need to do here, uh, we do need to see the bandits uh, actually open up the door to the vault here. We need to learn how to get in. As long as there's a single pixel hiding Graham behind this rock, they will not see him. Listen carefully for that password. Open Sesame! That's what I never guessed. Very secure password. Uh, Sierra does love their, uh, their fairy tale references, especially in King's Quest. Um, so we're going to be going out into the desert now a little bit. And again, you have to map out everything in the desert yourself. But in particular, you have to go to this random screen in the middle of the desert and find an, an old boot that happens to be here. This is the most important item in the game. You can't beat the game without it. You need that boot. Uh, we're coming up on an oasis here, and the location of this oasis is particularly important. It's about uh, four screens away from the bandit camp. Uh, we can cut corners a little bit here by going to left here, ending up down, and then we end up in the bandit camp here. There's water in the jar there. You do not want to drink that water because the animation of it is really slow and long. But luckily, the oasis that is outside the bandit camp over here is just close enough that we can drink from it, get to the camp, get back, and then uh, drink from it again. So we're Sierra protagonists, so of course we steal from the thieves, and it's okay when we do it. Hey, hey, we're adventure game protagonists. All right, so anyways, I did grab the staff from the bandit camp. Uh, we'll be heading back to the vault here. Uh, hopefully we remember the password. Thankfully, uh, we don't have to, like, actually remember it ourselves. Graham remembers it automatically. Uh, as we get into the vault... Open Sesame! Oh, no! The staff broke. There's two items in here that we need to grab really quickly. That vault door is going to close pretty quickly, so we need to grab the two items and then leave before it closes or else we're trapped in there and we take a game over. One more drink and then we start to head out from the desert. Uh, this is about eight screens of travel, so let's get in a quick donation. I've got you. We've got $10 from Ustra Ahazu, who says, Hey, David, what do you call a magical owl? Houdini. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, and good luck on your run. Oh, thank you so much, Ustra. I know you don't like puns, but thank you for that one. I loved it. 
Okay, so as we exit the desert, we're going to use the gold coin from the vault to uh, get our fortune told by the fortune teller. She will tell us the plot to the game, but we're going to skip that cutscene. We don't want to see it. It's a couple of minutes long. Uh, she does give us a magic amulet that will protect us from, well, magic, but we're not actually wearing it until we go into the inventory, select it, and click it on Graham. Uh, in the forest, there's a little bit of RNG here, 50-50 chance for the witch to appear, and she did not appear until the second screen, which is good. Uh, we don't want to see her on the first screen because uh, travel time of the spell. Ah, oh, freedom at last. Now you've been the next 500 years in a bottle. Yeah, we give her the bottle and she gets trapped. The only way you have of knowing, by the way, that the bottle will do that is if you open it yourself and then get a game over that way. Uh, but since we have uh, trapped that witch for no real reason, we're just going to go to her house now and loot uh, everything that she owns, uh, including a spinning wheel, a pouch, and a key. Uh, we are trapped in this forest right now. We've got a few things that we need to find here. Uh, let's see, the key is the first item in the inventory here. Yeah, memorize your item locations in the inventory. That makes it a lot easier to find it. Graham finds that the little key fits perfectly in this lock. So yeah, in this tree here in the middle of the forest, there's a heart hidden in the tree, but we're still trapped in the forest. We don't have a way out. So here's how we're gonna get out of the forest. First things first, the pouch has three Above gems in it. And then the honeycomb that we got from the bees, we're gonna go to this random screen in the middle of the forest, squeeze out the honeycomb, and then randomly start tossing out gems. And oh, look at that, it's an elf. It just happens to be here. And they do not notice the honeycomb. Then Graham captures it and lets it go. Move over, Rocky. You're in our way. Thanks for moving, Rocky. Uh, sorry. <laughs> voice yeah. acting at its peak. Yeah, yeah, so Sierra did pioneer voice acting in video games in this time, but uh, they used, uh, they just recorded lines from developers around the office. They did not pay any voice actors, and while well, the quality kind of shows a bit. My heart, you found it. I don't need this old thing anymore. Bong. Look at me, I'm a princess again. Herbert. Alicia. Completely ignoring Graham, by the way. Where have you been all this time, my love? Oh, darling, just take me home. I'll tell you on the way. But she did leave behind this very valuable harp. Uh, it's a really important item. I need it. Can't beat the game without it. Also, the fortune teller has left behind a tambourine here. Um, so we're going to start a string of saving the animals. First, a dog is uh, terrorizing these ants. So dog plays fetch, and the ants are eternally grateful. Uh, then we're going to give the gnome back here his spinning wheel. Uh, but in exchange, Graham wants the child's toy. G give me that toy, child. I need it. Relationship. Uh, finally, since the ants have pledged their help to us, we're going to go search this haystack, and they are going to come and help us. And if you know the words to this part, this part is a sing-along. Where the ants are biking Anthony, we're coming to help King Graham. Where the ants are biking Anthony, we're coming to help King Graham. And they give me a golden needle. We love that the ant king's name is Anthony. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, next is the most infamous puzzle of the game. As I walk across the screen, a cat is very suddenly going to appear and start chasing a rat. You have about half a second to throw the old boot in the desert at the cat to save the rat's life. If you don't do that, then the rat gets eaten, and the game is unbeatable forever, and you will not know why. Um, and that is not the cat from the incentive. Uh, that cat is coming up later on Mordax Island. Uh, and the, yeah, I do have to advise, the cat that we are voting to uh, bag or spare is actually an evil polymorphed wizard. So uh, I'm kind of in favor of uh, bagging it, but we're just in town for a bit, exchanging a couple of items. So uh, let's get a donation or two. You just left the cat out of the bag. Sure. <laughs> well, you're, you're in luck right now. Bagging the cat is at 5,214. 
to spare the cat's 3,670. So we are going to bag the cat as of right now, unless someone wants to go ahead and, and ruin that. Yo, I got a glitch here. Uh, we got a $100 donation from Admiral J, who says, I always bag Manana on the cat in my runs of King's Quest V. Why break with tradition now? Good luck to David and Poisonous Snake. So Admiral J is the world record holder for King's Quest V, uh, both French floppy version and the, uh, the CD version. And those are separate categories. Um, I'm getting pretty hungry right now, so I'm going to come here and get a custard. And how is your poor dear mother doing, William? Oh, she hasn't been doing too well lately. But my brother and I help out whenever we can. Thanks for asking, Amanda. Austin, keep your fingers out of that pie. Yeah, Austin. Pies look lovely. I think I'll take one. Yes, they were just made fresh this morning. Here you go. Yes, this will be a fine dessert for our dinner tonight. Let's go home, Austin. I love this voice acting. This is so good. It's so good. Here's the last of the pies. All right, silver, silver coin for the pie. Uh, this is the most important item in the game. Can't beat the game without it. Uh, we've got one last place to uh, visit before we can uh, move on with the game. Uh, we're going to go to these... Uh, this end with these distinguished gentlemen. I don't like this place. What do you want me to do with them? Rub them out. Uh, that seems to have been a poor decision. Okay, how am I going to get out of this? Well, obviously the solution is for a rat to come out of the mouse hole and free me from these ropes. If you didn't save the rat earlier, you will have no idea what you did wrong here, except maybe to uh, come to this place when you shouldn't at all. But we went here on purpose to get that rope specifically, and also this uh, leg of lamb in the pantry right here. We should have 13 items in our inventory at this point, so we can finally go back to that poisonous snake at the beginning of the game and do something about it. Uh, really quick, pull an item out of the inventory. Uh, as everyone knows, snakes are absolutely terrified of tambourines. We're going to use the tambourine to scare the snake off. Be gone, slithery varmint. All right, so we're going to end up in the mountains over here. Uh, uh, it's cold, so wear a cloak for safety, and Graham's going to get really hungry while he's traveling up this mountain. Uh, this walking here is just for safety. Pull out the rope. Uh, there's actually an obvious branch here. Don't do that. If you rope the branch, you are dead. Use it on the rock outcropping here. Uh, if Graham falls, he's going to handle it with grace. So I'm, I actually want to uh, show that off really quick. Uh oh, that last step was a doozy. <laughs> that last step was a doozy. I mean, Wilhelm need to have words. Yeah. Also, Cedric warns you about falling off the edge a little too late for you to do anything about it. But luckily for us, he's going to get captured right here. Stop! Don't come back. Finally, he's gone. We can have fun. Yeah. Let's have a little dance while Cedric's gone. No, oh, my sled. it's broken. This is why Cedric always tells us not to do things like that. Okay, well, there's a starving eagle right here, so the second half of the leg of lamb is going to be given to the eagle to, uh, to stop it from starving. Save the animals, except for the cat at the end of the game. Don't save that animal. Uh, that's not an animal. Uh, pull out the harp really quick. So Queen Isabella is going to capture us really quick, and uh, she's a little bit high strung right now. I am Queen Isabella, and you have entered my domain now. I command you to kneel before me, since both you and your friend over there have so thoughtlessly invaded my territory without my permission or knowledge. I have decided you shall both be put to death. Oh. Take him away, my pet. Uh, she will change her mind once you play the harp for her. Uh, skip another cutscene, and she wants us to kill this yeti, but I don't really want to kill the yeti. I kind of instead want to just uh, go ahead and give him this delicious pie that I bought earlier. Uh, that's the kind of pie that really sticks with you. He'll remember it for the rest of his life. <laughs> oh. All right, step inside, grab a crystal. Uh, if you don't grab this crystal, can't beat the game. And then we're going to go back and tell Queen Isabella about our success. Uh, another cutscene. Small difference between French floppy and CD version. Uh, in the CD version, I have to tab to, 
to uh, skip the cutscene, whereas in the French floppy version, I can just hold enter. It's one of the things that makes French floppy a little bit faster. By the way, Cedric's warning us about this big bird way too late for, for us to do anything about it. It's gonna capture us. Uh, when you get to the nest, your, your icon is gonna be on something that makes it not obvious that you can actually interact with anything in the nest, but you do need to grab a locket from the nest before the egg hatches and opens, or else uh, you will be lost forever. You will not be able to beat the game. Every one of these items is really important, but the eagle, how is it carrying Graham? How? I, I don't know. Uh, we, we end up at the beach here. There's an iron bar on the beach here. This bar is actually really difficult to notice on the NES version. Did you know this game has an NES port? Uh, then there's a boat to the north here. There's a hole in the boat, so you need to patch it with the beeswax, but you will never know that there's a hole in the boat until you take it out, and then Cedric warns you way too late for you to do anything about it. Out at sea here, one of the few tricks that I have discovered, you need to go right several screens, but if you go up or down a screen, then it will place you in the center. So you can save a lot of travel time by zigzagging instead of going straight across the screen. One of my few contributions to this speedrun. So this brings us to Harpy Island, where thankfully they capture Cedric again, but not so thankfully they capture us. Got more riveting dialogue here. Mm. I don't know. He doesn't look like my type. What do you think, Krulina? So once again, we need to get ourselves out of trouble. So harpies like harps, right? I would think Is that how it works? It's in their name. What's he doing? What's that thing? I don't know, but I want it. Hey, look at that there. I just stole it from there. there. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thankfully, at this point, uh, Cedric is injured. Not so thankfully, we do have to save him. Uh, I, Cedric is hated amongst uh, most of the Sierra community. But uh, we are leaving Harpy Island now, so now is the time to close that uh, cat incentive. So uh, are we bagging or sparing the cat? We are bagging that cat. Yes! No cats out of the bag this time. All right, uh, we are coming back to uh, the beach here. The old man here, he's a little hard of hearing, so he can help us out, but only if we give him some way to listen to us. So we give him the seashell that we found on Harpy Island, and then we've got one of the few cut scenes that we cannot skip in the CD version. Uh, the French floppy version can skip this cutscene, which is one of the reasons why most runners of this game play that version instead. Ooh, I'm feeling better already. Tell me, what was in those pool kisses? My employer would be very interested in them. Hey, what was that? I said, what was in those pool kisses? My employer would be interested in them. But unfortunately, this cutscene is a couple of minutes long, so this is a good time for a few donations. I can do that for you. Uh, people really liked the ant song. Mm -hmm. uh, so we got $25 from Sacron, who just says, Much like the ants, Chad is here to help. Let's break that million dollar mark. Yeah, let's do that. We can do that today. I know we can. $25 from Frozen Spade. Howdy, David. Huge shout outs from the Speedy Adventures community. We are proud of all the cool things you do, and I can't wait to see what is next for you. I've been looking forward to this run all week. Good luck and game big. We got time for one or two more. Sure. $25 from Casual Cheese, and they just say, look at donation page, open inventory, use wallet on donation page, you receive hype. That was a good walkthrough. <laughs> and $25 from Brittany, who says, the hot suns and choking sands are taking their toll on Graham. He must drink, and soon. These words haunted me as a child. I could never get past the desert as a kid, and it's so great to see David TKI destroy this game. Best of luck to all the runners this year. One more. Sure. $25 anonymous donation, and they say, Save Cedric, the best companion in game's history. He warned you of poison snakes and doesn't afraid of anything. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah, Cedric is the epitome of bravery. 
All right, so we're coming up on Mordak Island now, and uh, this is the point at which I closed the incentive because pathing is going to change here slightly, whether I bag or spare the cat. Uh, but first, we're gonna get, get shipwrecked on the shore. Uh, thanks for the warning, Cedric. Yeah, that you, island came out of nowhere. Like all of Cedric's warnings. So there's a fish here on the beach. This fish is not important. The only point of this fish is for bagging the cat. Uh, on the next screen here, we've got a couple of statues here. This is one of the few uh, item usages where Graham will walk slowly once you click the item. So walk as far up as you dare. On a couple of these screens, there's going to be a short pause before Cedric uh, tries to say something, like turning back bravely. So if you select this iron bar before this screen loads and you use it on the grate for that split second, you can slip into the grate uh, but without waiting for the animation of it to open, leaving you in this maze that uh, is very confusing. The first thing you need to do in this maze is find out where Dink is, and he's actually in multiple locations. So we're choosing this location closest to the exit of the maze. Play the tambourine for Dink. He's a huge fan of it. And with that, he's going to drop a hairpin. We need that hairpin because the door out of this maze is locked. But luckily for us, King Graham is actually a master thief and knows how to pick locks. We're going to end up in uh, Mordak's armory where we can find this deadly looking bag of peas. So coming up next is Warning. a pretty interesting uh, puzzle. And I'm going to safety save here because this is the first point at which RNG can literally decide that you will die. Uh, if we see the cat at this point, then we have to load. We did not see it. Good. We're waiting for a blue minion to appear here. That's good, RNG. Uh, oh, there it is. All right, so let's recap for a moment. If you go through the castle, you see the wizard, you're dead. You see the cat, you're dead. But you see the blue minion, you need to get captured by it on purpose and get thrown into this dungeon where you're going to see this rat go into the mouse hole. And so that's your clue to use the fish hook on the mouse hole to fish out this green moldy piece of cheese. We're in here for that cheese. This is the most important item in the game. You can't win the game without it. <laughs> All right, so Kasima is going to appear uh, somewhere between 20 to 40 seconds uh, after you're thrown in here. Obviously, we want it to be lower. Another CD version, French floppy version difference. Um, you have to wait for her animation to go off screen in the CD version before you can uh, move on any of the screens. So we lose her on purpose, and we have to find our own way through the maze back to the maze entrance in order to... Uh, Get back there. In the French floppy version, you do not pause and you can just follow her. But in the CD version, lose her on purpose. Uh, we do need to uh, get out this uh, bag of peas and make another safety save. Uh, I'm looking for that blue minion again. 50% chance here. N not this time. 75% chance here. For oh, cat's here. Got to load. Would yeah. It, you see the cat? You are dead unless you have a way to deal with the cat. All right, four to 10 seconds here. That was peas. That was a bag of peas. They're slippery. Uh, the reason we do that is because now the bag of peas is empty. So uh, another safety save here, there's about a 10% chance that Mordak is in his bedroom, uh, but we want to see the cat in the bedroom. There it is. Throw the fish and bag him up. You'll never bother anyone ever again, Mananan. All right, we end up in the library here to read this book, and so we've got a bit of a wait coming up. So once we read that book, we're going to wait in here for Mordak to go to sleep in his bedroom. Uh, but it's a scripted wait. The wait is about two minutes long. Walkthroughs might think you have to hide behind the bookshelves. No, just wait two minutes, unless you bagged the cat in the bedroom, then it's a minute and a half instead. Uh, but since we still have about a minute to go, this is a really good time for donations. We've got a lot of them. We've got $25 from Gadzek, and they just say, hello, that's a really nice hat, David DKI. Mm -hmm. I agree, that is a nice hat. <laughs> $5 from Dante Sapien. The first time I played King's Quest V, I gave the custard pie to the eagle and got ruined by the Yeti. Awesome to see it in a GDQ. Mm -hmm. $15 from Jetboy the Mage. 
Watch out, David TKI. That's a poisonous skip. A <laughs> hundred dollars from Flick. I grew up with King's Quest VI, so I love to see a chance for these games to be run at GDQs. Nothing was worse than making it to the Minotaur's Labyrinth and just making the game unwinnable without one specific item. Good luck in your run. So I just want to say King's Quest VI is extremely broken, and I would really like to see it in a GDQ. Yeah. All the King's Quest games. People also really love bagging the cat. Nega hyphen with one thousand five hundred and fifty-five dollars and fifty-five cents. Nice. Woo! And they say love seeing the old Sierra games show up at events. Keep up the great work and bag that cat. Well, as we have done. As you have done. So Mordek has gone to sleep now, and uh, he left his wand on the table. His wand is young and full of energy. Uh, we've been carrying Crispin's wand with us this entire game, but it's old and pretty much out of energy and not going to be any use at all. So we're going to transfer power from one wand to the other. And this wand power transferring machine is obviously powered by the green moldy cheese. Uh, but before it can uh, actually do the transfer, it's going to need to download directions uh, using Mordak's top of the line 56K modem. I hope he's not a light sleeper. I hope Mordak doesn't try to make like, a phone call, though, because then he'll know where you're at. This is not going to look good on our phone bill. Okay, it's finally over. Now we can grab uh, Crispin's wand, but we have not drained Mordak's wand completely of power. It still has uh, one shot left in it. I'll take care of you, swine. Swine. Yeah, it still has one shot left in it, but luckily Mordak's going to show us that he can't possibly be all bad because Cedric's going to show up in here and Mordak's going to immediately use his one shot on him. Hooray! Uh, but then he's going to start transforming, and so we're going to have to use our wand and start transforming too. So everyone knows flying things hate tigers. Uh, this final battle is basically just going to be click through the various spell options. You start in the lower right, you go counterclockwise. Time ends when you select the last option from here. So, what beats dragon? Bunny, of course. Very nice aim there. You think you're so smart, don't you? Well, I've got you now. One more transformation into a poisonous snake. Say goodbye, swine. <laughs> Very nice line there. Form of a mongoose. Now for Mordak's final form, he's going to get really desperate. And when Mordak becomes desperate, oh. his body becomes the flame, and the rainwater oh. eats the flame. So, uh, time. Really solid run. Uh -huh. Yeah, so you see GDQ, Mordak does not make good decisions. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and just wrap this up really quickly. It is super exciting to be able to do Sierra point and click adventures on the GDQ stage. They're actually some of my most favorite speedruns. And, and there's, just, there's just such a community out there trying to find out everything about how to optimize this game. So uh, I want to give shout outs to the King's Quest Discord, the Quest for Glory Discord, uh, the Speedy Adventures Discord, well, which is for all manner of point and click adventure games and not just the Sierra ones. Uh, thanks, Dark Armist, for uh, coming here and supporting me. Uh, I'm going to shout out two individuals from the King's Quest Discord. Uh, thank you, Jam Evil, for bringing me into the King's Quest Discord in the first place and getting me started on this game. And I also want to give a special thank you to One Short Eye for his uh, point-and-click speedrunning documentaries. They have been drawing a lot of eyes to this game. And so that's going to be it for me. See you next adventure. Thanks, David. That was really, really incredible to watch. Uh, I struggled with that game a lot as a kid. Thank you so much, David, for that really, really great run of King's Quest V. We are setting up for our next couple of runs here coming up. Uh, let me read a donation for you in the meantime. 
A lot of people were really, really excited for this one. $25 from Findicated. My sister and I grew up playing the King's Quest series, and I'm so excited to see five run at SGDQ. Good luck on the run, David Dickey. I remember, don't stand too close to the edge. He did not. No, David did not. All right, we're going to set up for some more runs. We'll be back in just one second. You don't go anywhere. All right, welcome back to Summer Games Done Quick 2022. We're here in Bloomington, Minnesota, benefiting doctors without borders. We're setting up for our next game right now, The Little Mermaid on NES. And you're here for speed gaming. And I am telling you right now, this is going to be a very, very, very quick through romp through the ocean. So don't go away. We're setting that up right now. But after these messages... We'll be right back. With a hot, hot Undertale jam going on right now. Dancing in my seat a little bit. It's good. It's good. It's good. We're setting up right now for The Little Mermaid. We'll be, done, we'll be ready real soon with this game. Until then, uh, let me read a few of your donations. Catching up here from the King's Quest run. $5 from Juju Girl. I grew up playing King's Quest with my mom. We played and beat every King's Quest game together. But we don't talk about eight. So this series means a lot to me. I've been waiting for the stream all day. Let's go! Let's go! Agreed. Thank you. We got $25 from Sarah Caesar. Less than three to everyone who made this event possible. Well, Sarah, your donations are what makes this event possible. Um, without you, without you at home watching, without you here in the audience... Without everyone who is donating to this great cause, this event would not be possible. So thank you so much for all of your generous donations. We've got $25 donation from FRS Maddie. 
Love watching GDQ. Keep up the good work. And thank you to all the runners for the great runs. Thank you so much. $25 from Firebricks. Had a blast on the couch at SGDQ 2017. So donating is a no-brainer. I'm going to tell you, donating is a no-brainer no matter what. Okay? We have got some really great games coming up. We are donating for a really great cause. $5 minimum donation. All of that goes to Doctors Without Borders. All of that qualifies you for some of our really excellent prizes you can qualify for right now. I'm a fan of the GBA Consolizer. It's only a $25 donation. The $10 Kirby Game Boy Keychain. The $20 Kirby Amigurumi doll. Or, of course, $200 cumulative. That means over the course of this week, your donations could go towards getting you that Heroic Replicas, Falchion, and Sly Cooper Kane bundle. If you ever wanted to figure out who would win between Marth and Sly Cooper, you and your friend can get those, and you can, you know, hang out, give it a shot. Now, speaking of winning, we are winning right now, because we are about to see a really, 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 really fast speed run of an excellent NES game. We've got Steve Zero with The Little Mermaid. 